With so many games these days pushing technical boundaries, filling our eyes with high-res textures and polygons, flooding our ears with crystal clear 3D sound and supplying a story that could put the page count of Lord of the Rings to shame, it's nice to go back and appreciate something a little more basic. Dead Pixels is a game that has no care to show you a detailed world, to have you see intricate detail in broken buildings, to hear the individual groans of zombies surrounding you. It's just you, some guns, and about three buttons. Punch shit, shoot shit, use shit. The game is laid out similar to an old school 2.5D arcade brawler, like your Double Dragons and your Streets of Rage. The main mode has you travel from left to right, either fending off or running from hordes of zombies, trying to make your way through 30 streets to the safe zone. Zombies you kill drop money, increasing amounts depending on the difficulty of the enemy and always slightly randomised, though very rarely they may drop a pitiful 10 bullet pack of ammo for whatever weapon you're wielding when you pick it up. Guaranteed you won't be using the weapon you need when you get one of these drops. Some of the buildings on the upper area of the screen can be entered, and these regularly contain a few little trinkets like bottled water, teddy bears and batteries, along with more useful items like medkits, weapons and grenades. The trinkets are only used to gain extra money from shops, with many shopkeepers also offering extra for very specific trinkets or items, though don't expect to ever have the item they want. Most of the time they'll ask for something that doesn't even make an appearance until 10 streets later. The shopkeepers are randomly selected, most of them just generic guys and gals, but you do get a few sneaky cameos in there, such as this grossly incandescent bastard. Through the shops you can buy new weapons, ammunition, throwable slash deployable weapons, and usable items. You can also upgrade your character's stats, which boosts your health, running speed, weapon and melee damage, and some other aspects of the character that don't really matter all that much. The stats are a little poorly balanced, with some being outright useless beyond a certain point like health, when flooding your inventory with health kits and spamming the use item button is cheaper, just as effective, and something you'll be doing regardless. Then there's the melee upgrade, which is in my opinion the most broken item in the game. One level in that and you'll see frequent crits, two levels and basic enemies become an easy thing to spam punch through, and maxing it leaves crowds of zombies unable to move, since there appears to be some kind of bug relating to the stun mechanic of the melee which appears to make it stack with each hit. It's only really noticeable on the tanky and boss enemies though, since everything else will fall over long before that point. Regardless of how useful or not each stat upgrade is, you'll need them to push through the upcoming hordes. Like many of these types of games, the further you get, the tougher the enemies become, spawning in larger numbers, tanking more hits, gaining new abilities like spitting acid and spitting bloody acid, and even affecting enemies around them to make them more powerful, like making them spit bloody acid. Okay, aside from this guy who's on fire, this guy who spawns hordes of tough military zombies, and this guy who's immune to damage but slowly takes it over time, making him a constant obstacle when he appears, every other zombie power is apparently puking on people. Pretty sure Resident Evil taught us that. At the very least, these three zombies take the spotlight as the game's few bosses, providing an extra bit of challenge as you progress, and denying you access to the next set of streets until you kill them. Which doesn't make a lot of sense for this guy. The zombie torch and commander radio here might cause trouble if left alone, but the masked self-destruct would just end up killing himself anyway. Just let me in, you assholes! The graphics in this game certainly exist. Like many of the cheap indie titles on Steam, Dead Pixels adopts the 8-bit style of graphics with big chunky pixels completely wasted on a 4K monitor, or even a 640x480 monitor, am I right? While I'm not a huge fan of the widespread use of this graphical style, I can't really fault it for this given that the game was intended to be distributed cheaply given its very cheap price, and the name of the game ties very thematically into its style. The graphics do their job perfectly fine, relaying visual information effectively to indicate the different zombie types and what abilities they have. Have. Little flashes when you lose health, an edge of screen warning to better indicate you're low on health, just enough detail in the zombies to tell when they're taking hits or being stunned, and several different environments to give the streets more variety. Though, given that each street is a simple walk from left to right with little more than road barriers blocking the path, there's not much more that could be done graphically to establish one area being different from another. In fact, the only three locales you'll see in the entire game is a street, a tunnel, and a shopping centre. The only issue I have with the graphics is that the spitting bloody enemies are quite tough to distinguish from others in a crowd and the projectiles they fire are also highly bloody damaging and almost bloody invisible as they bloody fly across the bloody road. There's not much to say about the sound, apart from it gets a little bit samey after a while. The first time you fire the shotgun you'll be hearing that sound for the rest of the game. It's also quite poorly mastered within large waves of enemies. If you do anything that kills or damages a lot at once, like use any weapon that penetrates multiple enemies, or use a weapon that affects the whole screen. Ultimately though, any fault I make with the game's audio is countered by the music, which is just fantastic. Unlike the graphical style, they decided that the audio would not be 8-bit, and you get to spend the entire game rocking out to that awesome soundtrack.
oh, sorry. And just to break up the rock, every time you enter a shop you get a nice acoustic guitar solo of Moonlight Sonata, occasionally with Solaire. This isn't the only mode the game has to offer, however, though admittedly the other two modes are more of the same with a slight twist more than anything truly game-changing. The solution has you taking control of a convict who is given a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to clear their name of their crime. Ranging from petty thievery to murder to whatever war crimes this cool dude committed, you must journey into 15 zombie-infested streets and activate a meltdown sequence at the nuclear power plant before running back through to escape. The main spin of this mode, aside from the getting to run to the left as well as the right, involves a character selection screen. Instead of shops, you have an inventory of four radios that let you call in airdrops, though any items you request must be paid for through the same money drops as other modes. You also don't get immediate access to the drop, it gets left as a pickup in a random number of streets, so you have to prepare before running out of ammo or health kits. As you don't get shops, you also don't have any way to level up your character. Each one has a specific set of stats that will take you through the entire game, and just like in the main mode, if you pick a character with good melee skill like these three, then they will carry you through the rest of the game, because they make the game a bit of a joke. Early on you can accumulate massive amounts of money this way, then you can buy the best weapons, shit tons of ammo, and blast through the entire crowd there and back in a breeze. Those looking for a challenge at least have the option of other characters who aren't as powerful, though personally I don't really get too far with those characters. The amount of time you have to spend grinding money at the start with the melee just takes too long and I get bored. Finally we have The Last Stand, which is a fairly basic wave-based survival mode. You're in a single environment with access to a shop between waves, and you just have to fight constant spawns of zombies until you die. The shop doesn't refresh any of its stock, but it's quite heavily stocked with every weapon and item available in the game, meaning you can last quite a while if you spend your money wisely. This mode gets a little tedious after a while, as even when the game throws hordes of its most powerful enemy types at you, you can cut through them like butter with most guns. All of these modes can be played multiplayer, unfortunately I couldn't grab any footage of this that would do it any justice, as I'm not two people. I have no friends! Dead Pixels is at the very least a fantastic little time waster, with solid controls, a fantastic soundtrack, and a simple idea well put together into some frantic shooty fun, all in a package priced perfectly for someone looking to fill a weekend or two. If there was maybe a little bit more variation on the style of levels you could have, maybe including some environmental obstacles to get past, or mixing it up a bit more with the road moving in different shapes, the game might be able to hit a perfect rating for me. At the very least, this game is a solid recommendation from me, so I highly suggest you go and play it.